Welcome to Tales from Wherever, a peephole into lives rarely seen. Become a fly with me, and ah, here's our wall now. On a dark night in Wherever Library, we find two of the sisters three in terse deliberation. What say we enchant the pumpkin patch? Bring the gourds to dancing life. Hmm. No. We tried that in the 1800s, remember? The townsfolk ended up worshipping them. Yes, instead of us, I remember. Ooh, how about a costume party? And risk a repeat of Tut meeting teenagers in two-ply. Hmm, you're right. He still won't return my scrolls. Okay, okay. There's a bulletin in town seeking a new speed dating venue. Please, Soria, we're a library, not a brothel. Magda, with her keen hawk's vision, notices a pair of eyes glaring at her from across the checkout counter. Who's there? The figure scrambles and bolts away. After them! It could be a spy from those despicable warlock triplets. Always trying to edge in on our market with their ridiculous single-paged book. One book that holds thousands of others? I can shoot flames from my fingertips and even I find that preposterous. There it is, up ahead. Is... is that a child? Or an imp? Quick! Catch it before it flies off! Children can't fly, Magda. Yes, I know that. But this one's nearly a preteen. Oh, it's all right. He ran into Tonk. <laughs> Sorry. Don't apologize to the trespasser, Tonk. Sorry. Now bring him over here. Can Tonk go back to feeding pigeons now? In a bit, dear. Would you mind restraining our friend while we ask a few questions? Mm, oh, okay. Who sent you, spy? Grindle? Wordle? Or their daft youngest brother by five minutes, boff? None of those are names. And I'm... Not a stinking spy! A likely story, spy! Do you suppose he's here for a book? Bah! Can't fly, but it can read? What are humans teaching their offspring? <laughs> I ain't here for no book, neither. Clearly not. Then what brings you to our humble repository of tomes? Uh... <laughs> Rain. Pardon? I... I came in to get out of the rain. Why? It hasn't rained here in nearly a fortnight. Mm. Oh. It was just so warm and quiet, except for the pigeons. I didn't want to leave. Home invasion notwithstanding, and you'll forgive me if my grasp of human physiology is wanting, but your kind does need to eat, yes? I make do. He pulls a roasted leg of fowl, speckled with lint from his pant pocket, and tears into it. Hey! Tonk wonder why pigeon population dovetail. <laughs> I do admire his willingness to murder indiscriminately. Like me is a wee hatchling. Yeah, except I don't look like a cockatoo, but... Uh, are those feathers real? Come pluck one and find out. Surely someone must be concerned as to your whereabouts. Uh... Eric. Eric. Your wife and children, perhaps? I'm 13. I'm confused. Does that mean more or fewer wives? None, Magda. Bah! More likely, he has parents searching for him. Don't got parents, and if I do... I ain't searching very hard. Well, how does such a charming orphan 
end up in a place like wherever. Not like it's none of your business or nothing, but... Okay, so Dimitri's this traveling carpet salesman who demonstrates the unbeatable tensile strength of his rugs by using one to wrap up a willing audience member. A planted member. And who makes for a better complaint-free burrito filling than a protege with no familial ties. Anyway, he's loading the truck after a roadshow one night and forgets to unravel me. Whatever, not the first time. But I guess after hitting a bump, my carpet tomb rolled off of the back. And I've been hoofing it ever since. He never came back. If he did, it would only be to bill me for the carpet I ruined, clawing my way free. He must go through an awful lot of assistance that way. Hmm. No home, then. So what? I don't need no home. I got street smarts. And a shiv. Talk! Confiscate the shiv! What? Hands off! Ouch! And there's more where that came from. Hey! There is no stabbing in a library! Unless we're the ones doing it. Precisely! When you're done nursing your gash, Tonk, kindly take this ignoble youth up to the roof and drop him off. Ah! Now wait a second, Magda. Weren't we just discussing ways to improve attendance? Yes, with so many of our visitors overcome with sudden and inexplicable cases of cataracts, books haven't exactly been flying off the shelves. But I don't see how that- What better way to show the humans there's nothing to fear here than hosting one of their own? What, like a mascot? I'm not gonna be your mascot. Exactly like a mascot. I'm not gonna be your mascot! Hmm, it's not a terrible idea. Did you have any thoughts on costumes? Well, not as of yet, but I... Hey! Are you old birds listening to me? <gasps> oh, an old bird. That's a splendid idea. Like a wizened buzzard, reflecting on a lifetime of scavenging as she glides beneath a red sun. How majestic. Tonk like birds. Aww. Aww. Look! If I'm gonna kick it with you broads, which I'm not saying I am because that'd be stupid, we're setting some ground rules. You know, sisters, I think a chirpy little sparrow might be more befitting. No mascot, that's rule number one. Rule number two, no like testing spells on me or nothing. If I wake up with two heads, I'm using both of them to think up bad words to call you. And three, uh, please find me something to eat that's not pigeon. The sisters huddle and whisper. Your terms are reasonable, though we've just a few of our own. Eric, the newest tenant of Wherever Library, was to relieve Tonk of cleaning duties, a position held only nominally given the size and tenacity of the dust bunnies lurking the bookcase maze. He was to greet the fair folk of wherever, dropping casually into conversation his satisfaction that a communal space for reading, relaxation, and definitely not having your soul imbibed exists in such convenient proximity. He was to assist Soria with the trying on of gaudy hats, and perhaps most importantly, he was to be a friend. This concludes today's portion of Tales from Wherever. Happy haunting! <laughs>